let's watch this clip that features Chris D'Elia reviewing or reacting to Joe Rogan's comedy special. What did Chris D'Elia have to say about Joe Rogan's epic, well-received, genre-defining Netflix comedy special, Burn the Boats, his first one in six years that's been met with rave reviews? What did Chris D'Elia have to say about this special that absolutely blew the socks off of everyone who watched it? Let's see what he says in this one minute and 40 second review. <laughs> Crazy. One minute, 40 second review. Rogan special came out and I'm happy about it. You know? And then I love like, it's so crazy how like, obviously we know there's, we know obviously, you know, I didn't, I honestly haven't seen the reviews. I know that. Oh my God. Everyone's lying. That's how you know you're lying, right? Because you say you watched the special, but then the first thing that you want to talk about are the bad reviews. If you liked it, if you watched it and you liked it, why don't you talk about the things that you liked? Oh my God, what a great special. I love that joke. I love this joke. I loved how he approached this thing. I love when he did that, when he did this. Immediately, he goes to the bad reviews. Immediately. Wow. But the media is just going to tear it apart because it's Joe Rogan and he's anti-woke. And, um... So do people... That's the thing, you know, that's the thing that I realized when I watched, when I read the view, reviews. I think people have got Joe Rogan fatigue, especially mainstream media, especially because they tried to already cancel him, especially during the pandemic, right? The the whole N-word thing, um, the horse tranquilizer thing, the ivermectin thing for COVID, getting COVID in the first place, still doing shows, um, other comments he made. They've been trying to cancel him for a while and it didn't work. I think they've all tired. I think the negative reviews he's getting are genuinely people just not saying are gen are more should be more hurtful because I get the feeling most of the reviews are people just saying he's generally not funny. I don't think it's like an anti right wing thing or because they don't like him because he's not woke. No. I think a lot of the bad reviews are people saying we watched the special. This guy talks about comedy ad nauseum. He acts like he's the gatekeeper. He makes it seem like he's super funny. But then when he gets on stage, he's terrible. He's maybe one of the worst we've ever seen. Every review is saying that. Every review is like quoting jokes from the special and saying like, this is not funny. Like, that's what they're saying. That's actually worse than like the whole, oh, he's he's like, you know, anti-establishment and he goes against the narrative and he pushbacks against mainstream media. That's why they're trying to take him. I don't think so. I think mainstream media is kind of tired of Rogan. They're tired of him really and truly. And they're actually just criticizing him based on the strength of his ideas, the things that he says. And sometimes if his unfunny comedy comes out. They're, they're one thing that they always go to is like, it, hey, this is, I saw somebody saying it and they were like, this is a ha ha hacky. That's a great point, Asad Aziz. That's a fucking great point. Joe Rogan is mainstream media. That's actually a very good point. He actually is now. Yeah, yeah he actually is. He definitely is. I think I still got my, I still see Rogan through those rotinted tinted glasses of when I first started listening to the pod and shit. Like, he's far surpassed that. He's definitely, he's definitely um, part of the establishment. That's for sure. This is a hack or whatever the joke was. And I, I was like, all right, let me watch this clip. And it was straight up just not hacky. You know, it was just, you did. The guy that like gets on stage and squawks around and makes noises and giggles every time they say a joke, telling somebody, like judging what's hack and what's not hack. I don't know if you're the best person to listen to on this subject, my friend didn't like his oh it was the, the you know what it was the michelle obama thing about how she uh, no this is what they did they took it out of context they were like oh look he's promoting the fact that michelle obama has a penis and then i watched the clip and i watched the clip that they post and they ended it before he says i don't actually think michelle obama has a penis but everything else i said i think is true which is the joke and they said oh they were like, oh, he's perpetuating this misinformation that now Michelle Obama has been. His whole point was that he doesn't believe in that. I Why is he fighting so hard anyway for Rogan? Does he not know that Rogan has not mentioned his name since he got cancelled? I don't think he's mentioned his name once. He's made some jokes and some snide remarks about him and shit. Which you, well, he's made some jokes that you could interpret as this is towards chris but i don't think he's even said his name since he got cancelled he's not had him back on a show he doesn't book him at a comedy mothership 
He's been excommunicado from fucking Rogan Circle. Clearly. Even Brian Callan got introduced back into the fold. And Callan got accused of fucking rape. He just got accused of messaging underage girls and maybe, you know, not being the greatest hookup. Brian Callan even got back on Rogan. He hasn't still. So I don't know why he's riding so hard for Rogan. Like, I don't think that guy's your friend. I don't know. But I guess because he's famous and he's rich, you know, people always kind of bend over and show him their asshole just in case. I The media is so t terrible, dude. And no, people with an agenda. Dude, this, I don't even know if this was the media. It was some guy writing about it and on Twitter and he said this. And I was like, dude, you cut before the joke ends. It's horrible. The one thing that they have is it's hack. Like, like super woke people even know what is hack. Now we're going to try. Okay, this is where we want to go down. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's. I think it's... Um. I think it must be bittersweet for these comedians, right? It must be bittersweet. Because there was a time when comedy podcasts were popping, when they were telling us what funny was. <clears throat> and I guess maybe some of us, because we weren't maybe experienced or didn't have much knowledge about comedy, we were just taking what they were saying as gospel. This person's a murderer. This person's a killer. This person's a beast. Da -da -da -da. But the more we listened to pods, the more we started to, you know, gain a bit of understanding of what comedy was. Maybe we started to watch a few specials. We started to slowly realize, uh, I think you're incorrect. I think the person that you say is amazing. I actually went to go watch them live. I watched a special of theirs. I, they're not that funny. I actually prefer this other person. Do you know what I mean? So I think now, unfortunately, they can't do the whole okey doke. You know what I mean? They can't pull the wool over our eyes anymore. So even though he's trying to argue that people don't know what work means or what even hack means, it's like, maybe they don't. But one thing they do know is that you're not funny. You know, so let's take away all those labels and stuff. Let's just get back to the funny. Most of these guys' specials aren't funny, and I'm w I'm wondering. I'm really wondering though, who's gonna be the comedian in that circle who restores the feeling? There has to be one, because even Chappelle, his specials have kind of floundered and not been. They've kind of you know, flattered to deceive. I wouldn't really count Louis C.K. in that circle because he's not. He's a an amazing comic, obviously, and still puts out great specials. But I wonder which comic from that group will restore the feeling there has to be at least one there has to be one who's gonna bring out a special and we're gonna be like oh shit okay this guy's really funny though in the crew it used to be tom segura but his specials have been been a bit shit ari shafir is i like him but his comedy style is a bit like you know you have to kind of be into it to maybe appreciate it um shane gillis is obviously amazing but he's too he's too much of a new person in the group i don't want to conclude him but I wonder which comic is going to try to restore the feeling and remind people, no, we're actually funny. We're actually really good at what we do because a lot of these guys aren't. And they're making us question if either, if any of them are funny, you know, or if they're just kind of like using their celebrity, using their notoriety from podcasting and just segueing it into comedy. Maybe they were never funny to begin with, you know. Maybe that's maybe that's what we're, we're starting to see. These guys were maybe never funny from the start but they just all got really famous on pods via Rogan and other things that then allowed them to perform at bigger or to, in front of bigger audiences doing stand up because technically the people watching them are just there to see them, you know? Cause I remember, I remember Theo saying something similar when Theo first got started on King and the Sting. I remember Theo saying something similar to like Rogue to about Brendan, basically in a, in a way, basically trying to say that, Oh, Paul Brendan's appeal is that he's got a really popping podcast and firing a kid and people just want to see him, you know? So I wonder, I wonder how many people that go to comedy specials that go to, sorry, that go to see comedians perform on stage, especially a comedian that has a podcast. I wonder how many people in the audience actually just go just to see the person in real life. <laughs> you know, they don't even care if they're not funny. They just want to see them. Like, <laughs> that's it. That's kind of brutal. That, which would explain a lot, to be fair. It would explain a lot. Because some of you think, so hold on, why are these people actually going because they think this guy's funny? Or because it's just like a, it's almost like an unofficial live podcast anyway, in a way. Maybe, 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 maybe.